Okay, in this video we're going to use GeoGebra to show the visual aspect of the Pythagorean theorem. So the first thing we'll do is set up a line segment. I'll click my segment between two points, and I'll just create an arbitrary segment somewhere, A and B. The next thing I'll do is I'll click my semicircle through two point tool. I'll click the two points I want to focus on and create the semicircle. Now I go back and create a new point on the semicircle. I hover until the semicircle is bold. That means I'm on it. There's point C, and I always do a quick test by dragging to see if it's on the semicircle. And now what we're going to do, do a quick application of Thales theorem here, right? This is a semicircle. AB can be thought of as a diameter. By creating a triangle, where one of the sides is the diameter and the third point is on the circle or semicircle, we automatically create a right triangle. It's a really fun theorem to prove, but there it is. These are all right triangles now. So now we have that set up. We want to show that the, the squares of the sides, when we add them up, are equal. So now we'll just do a quick run through of creating a square. So I'm going to use my perpendicular line tool to create two perpendicular lines, one through point C and perpendicular to BC, so I click the point and the line, and the same thing over here through point B and perpendicular to BC. Now what I do is I create a circle, right, go to my circle tool, oops, over here, with a center of C going through B, I could have done with the center of B going through C, it doesn't really matter, and now I'm going to highlight the intersection here of the circle and the perpendicular line to get point D. And the next thing we want to do is use my parallel line tool. I want to create a line that's parallel to segment BC through point D. So I click point D and then BC. And there's the parallel line. And now I use my intersect tool again to create the intersection point between the parallel line and the perpendicular line, and I get point E. And now what I'm going to do is create my square C, B, E. D, and then back to C to close it. And now, I mean, this is a little sloppy because there's lots of things in the background. You can see that this would give students flexibility to play with the square on that side. And now what I would probably do is hide some of these objects. We don't need the circle. We need to see that, for example. We don't need to see our semicircle. We don't need to see the parallel and perpendicular lines. So I should get rid of those. And you can scroll through these to see what's happening, right, if you're not sure which one's which. Um, and of course, the perpendicular lines totally optional whether or not you keep them. But usually you can tell a line because it'll be a letter followed by a colon and then an equation. Um, the same thing is true for a circle. So it's not just a point, it's a line or it's a function, excuse me, a line or a circle or anything like that. So, um, and if you could drag this around, realize your triangle is the free object and everything depends on that. And now we just repeat this process for the other two sides and we can set up this basic interactive Pythagorean theorem applet. So the next thing we do is, well, there's lots of things we can do, but I'll create the perpendicular line through C and perpendicular to AC. Same thing over here. And then use my circle tool. Right, and I use my intersection tool again. Hover right over there to get point F. My parallel line tool. Parallel through F, parallel to AC back to the intersection tool, so this is how I'm constructing my squares. Now I have my polygon, A, C, F, G, my square. And there's the square. And now again, I can go through and hide the things I don't want to see. I don't want to see those, those extra lines or right, I don't want to see the equation of, for the circle. We don't need the semicircle anymore because we've already created the right triangle, so we just need to create the squares. And last, um, perpendicular line through B, perpendicular to AB, perpendicular through A, and perpendicular to AB. And then we use a circle tool, center of B through A, intersect that circle with my perpendicular line to get point H, back to the parallel line tool, through H and parallel to AB, and last we intersect the perpendicular lines to get point I. Now we connect these points to create our square. And now, of course, I want to clean this up. I don't really need these extra lines and circles. 
And what I have now is a simple interactive applet that lets you play with the squares off the sides. And maybe in other videos we'll look at how easy it is to have GeoGebra display and calculate the areas of these squares. You can display inside the square, we can also display it over here. And even just by looking at it, no matter how we rearrange the right triangle, students might quickly deduce that the sum of these two squares has to equal this square over here. Alright, thanks.